Yo, what up? Welcome to Mo Boxing No Problem. I'm Jose Marines Jr. and I'm joined by my co-host Zeke. And today we got a special guest with us today. We got a pro boxer out of Los Angeles, California, Jalen Walker, aka Skywalker. How's it going, Jalen? What's up, man? It's going good. How y'all doing? Doing good, well. Man. Just pushing the truth. Glad to have you on. Yeah, thank you for making the time. Uh, first question we got for you. I'm sure you get asked this all the time, and it's uh, how did you get into boxing? I get this asked all the time. All right. Simple answer. <laughs> my dad was a boxer. He was amateur. His dad was a boxer. He, um, I believe he had like his pro license. My dad's cousins, they all boxed in YA and stuff. So fighting, you know, runs in our blood. So we're good. Nice. Yeah, that explains everything. <laughs> yeah. How do you, yeah. How do you get the n- nickname Skywalker? Uh, just growing up, you know. My last name is Walker, so people always said Skywalker. It's always been a joke if I was going to take the uh, dark path or stay on the light path, you know, like uh, Dark Vader, you know. So yeah. like, always back and forth, you know. One minute I'm a uh, Luke Skywalker, well, not Anakin Skywalker, and the next minute I'm a uh, Dark Vader. Okay, okay, that's interesting. That's cool. But when you get the knockouts, what do you say? You're on the dark side. Yeah, man, I'm on the dark side. You know, I'm a good guy. <laughs> But, you know, we all got a little darkness, a little darkness. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and Jillian, can you tell us a little bit about your amateur career? You know, what's some of your major uh, accomplishments from back in the day? I was a Silver Glove National Champ for a year. I was ranked number one in the nation. I have two silver medals at the Junior Olympics. Um, I qualified for a third time at the JO Nationals, but I missed my flight. I got to the airport too late. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, turned pro at 17, 17 years old. I turned pro in Tijuana, Mexico because I was too young to go to the Olympics. And that was the best decision I ever made. Not just my style as a fighter is more tailor-made for the pros, but the lifestyle of it. You know, a lot of kids, they just be more developed than the other kids and amateurs because, you know, we're still kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some kids, they develop physically and more mentally, but... When you're a pro and you're a man, you know, it's it's different. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. Let's talk about your pro debut a little back in November 2019. What were your emotions on uh, and that day? What was going through your mind? Man, uh, let me whoop this guy's ass. Let me not embarrass <laughs> myself. So many things going in my brain, you know, because I was in Mexico. So I'm like, man, I can't lose. I got to win. You know, it was a big deal for me. And, um, I was very stressed about getting the knockout. I was very stressed about it, and I, I got it in the first round, you know, three knockdowns. So I was just, you know, it was cool. Uh, yeah, I, I like Mexico. I, I love to fight in Mexico again. Absolutely. It's, it's fun, man. Yeah, and, and that's kind of our next question as well. You know, as you mentioned, you, you made your pro debut to Mexico to so the age, and your first six fights we're all in Mexico, you know, how was that ex- experience? And you know, now that you've fought in the U.S., like what, what are some of the, the differences between fighting Mexico and fighting the U.S.? You could say the quality of opponents, but I would say it's the location that I was at. You could have good fights, you could build a good career in Mexico, but you wanted to be on a higher platform. Mm. That's yeah. different. And I would say it's harder for me to get American fighters because American mm-hmm. fighters are – they cost more, and they don't want that loss on their record. So they like overpriced themselves. And it's very mm-hmm. hard fights. Like, I was supposed to fight on the overtime show in August, but, like, I think it was six, seven guys, they said no. They all canceled. And they were all mm-hmm. from the U.S. So it's very difficult for me to get U.S.-style matchups. Get you, get you, I get you. Your your only blemish on your pro record was a, a draw to uh, Angel Contreras back in 2021. What did you do? You recall that fight and what did you learn from that fight? Of course, I recall that fight, man. That fight, I thought I won. It was either I won or it was a draw. It wasn't the type of draw where you lost and you get saved to get a draw. You know, save that fight. I was young, man. I was 19, and I think that guy was like 28, and I was trying to knock him out. I went in there in that mindset. I'm like, I want to keep my knockout. Well, I believe yeah. what the record was. I think it was like 90% knockout ratio. I wanted to keep it up high. So I was winning. I okay. was boxing. Sat down. Got a little stupid. And made the rounds closer. And after that, I had to change everything. Because the team I had behind me wasn't the right team. 
you know. So the team that I have now, I got with them after that fight, and it was slow progress, but we made progress. And I believe God makes certain things happen in your life for a reason, because I, sure. I probably would have. I don't like to say losing and stuff, but I don't think it would have been good for me being with the team I was. It wasn't the right structure. You know, I'm with an Argentinian coach. He's an asshole, but that's what you need in your life. <laughs> you, know? you know, he's he's very tough. He uh he pronounces my name um Shaylin Shaylin all the time. <laughs> Can't even say my name correct. And every fucking second I make a mistake, you see, you hear if one of that puta da 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 da, just be like rambling on, you know, just <laughs> fuck shit. I don't I don't know if it's a thing, but yeah. I feel it, bro. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. or he, Malikon, Marika. He be, uh, that's just his famous words right there. It's like you're learning some very interesting uh, Spanish words, uh, you know? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm always know Spanish. I've always known Spanish. Um, half of my family's uh, Mexican. So oh, that's a kid. Yeah, that's dope. And, and like I'm, my it, cousins and stuff, and like my sisters, my half sisters, they're half Mexican. So where, I got cool. where, where we're from. I don't know what part, but her, my sister's mom, they're from maybe Guadalajara, but their dad, like my sister's grandpa, he's a Salvadorian. Oh, I'm he's... from Guadalajara uh, too, bro. Oh, you're from Salvador? No, 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 hell, no, no, I'm from uh, Jalisco, Guadalajara, Jalisco. <laughs> <laughs> you thought how, how, how mad he got? Go on. <laughs> Hey, this fool said, hell nah, I don't claim me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Zeke. Hey, um, hey, all the respect to uh, all the respect to every every but every you non know, I'm Central American, you know, but no, nah, I'm from uh, Jalisco, that was where I was born. But I do have uh, Salvadoran friends and Dorian friends. And when it comes to either boxing or any other sport, they always go along. They always go about I'm like, you know what? It's a sport, you know, you win, you lose some, and it is what it is. Go with the flow. Sorry about you. So I haven't really heard much. Of that, you know, they got soccer, but I haven't heard of boxing. Yeah, yeah no, boxing. No, they're not really, they're not really big in boxing. More like in uh, just the national team, as of what I heard too. Maybe yeah. like in like, like four years, I maybe heard like maybe one or two, but that's in the in the lower lower leagues of boxing. You know, not in the upper upper upper. You know, upcoming promotions. But yes, sir. Go pro seek. You be the first. <laughs> just kidding. Dang, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, coming back to you, Jalen. You know, your last fight, you had a great performance. You know, second round KO over Jorge Villegas. You know, you being from LA, how special was it to put it on that kind of performance at the YouTube Theater in Inglewood? Hey man, my family, we lived it up. It was proud to make my family proud. You know, it made me very happy. Bring pride to my last name and. Even my cousins that don't share my last name but share my blood, it, it brings a lot of pride to me. You know, hearing my aunties and all my cousins screaming my name, it was very, it was a surreal moment to be in LA. All the people that see me in the amateurs to be there and witness me do it on the, you know, the big platform. It was dope. I'll, I'll love to have a fight in LA again. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the Staples Center, that's what I want. And I know it's called yeah. the Everybody in my heart. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Where um where exactly do you live in LA? If you don't right. mind me asking. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Right now I stay in uh South Central in Florence District on Florence Avenue between Central and Oprah. Oh but you know Plaza Make, all right, bro? I don't want to say it on here, but I don't want to get burned yeah. out. <laughs> and with, though. Yeah. I used to I live in around... a little bit. You know, it's not that far, but it's not super close, but it's like a 10, 15 minute ride or Alameda. Yeah, bro. I'm. Uh, I I stay around 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 well, LA area. I'm always all around either LA or Pomona, but I'm yeah. pretty much you know. I've grew up um that hospital called St. Francis. I used to live oh, like okay. right as a kid. I I live uh thirty literally like thirty seconds from here, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah me. Sir. Oh, when I used to live there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, back to you, bro. Are you signed to Mastrim or are you a free yeah. agent? Um, right now we're uh, in the process of signing, you know, a fight deal. Okay. So, gonna keep going that route. Fight deals after fight deals, you know, it'll be a couple fights with them, and then we have the opportunity to resign. And that's what I believe we're gonna do. I believe me and Mastrim are gonna have a great relationship moving forward. Oh yeah, that's what's up.
That's dope because because they're just making they're making their home gym your current gym, right? Yeah, yeah, man. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty we're always going to be you know in tight with each other. I love yeah. that. Uh, the whole platform is pretty cool. I like the whole international scene about it. Yeah. It's yeah, absolutely. I feel like they're they're like whether it's Mexico, U.S., the U.K., Saudi Arabia, they're breaking. Yeah, we be getting a lot of guys from Ireland. I can never understand shit they say. They be like, <laughs> they be like, "Hey, bro," I be like, "What are you saying?" And then they be like, "Fucking up in it, hey, well, like, no, it's <laughs> very difficult, but it's fun, you know." The Irish, type of Irish, you got the ones that really hate the British. That be like, "Fuck the British, we're not British," and then you got the full laid back ones. Those, those are the only two I've met so far. So they're either like. <laughs> Fuck the British, or they're like cool. <laughs> I you you. I, I, hey. I you cannot call them British. If you call them British, they're gonna start a war with you. Hey, gonna, get, gonna get like Seiko here with hell no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> it will be worse. They will like they'll go into history. They'll give you a fucking history lesson. They'll be like da 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 da. I'm like all right, bro. I'm on your side. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, enough, enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ireland, you know they they they're legit people. They're good people. Absolutely. Um, and then Jalen, when, when might we see you back in the ring again? Man, early February. You know, I can't say too much, but early February. Um, maybe on the undercard of a big name, and things are looking good. So I'm still in camp, damn near. I only took like two days off, and I was back in the gym after my fight. I'm here training. Just need to line up my smart partners, and we're good to go. I want to stay there. Active. real active. Yeah, right. man, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there when you spar if, if it's possible for me to watch fun because I know in some areas it's, it's pretty private, but I'll be down yeah. to shoot some footage for you and stuff. Not only for you, but for everyone, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, we could uh, work something out. So sure, sure. Ne- next question would be any particular opponents you are uh, targeting or looking forward to. I uh, want thirty division, everybody. Anybody that's a one thirty, I want. You know, uh, I don't call myself a shark. I call myself a killer whale, and uh, I'm coming, man. I'm coming for all them guys. Whoever's at one thirty, whoever's around there, you know, this is boxing. We don't have friends. If you're in my way, I'm gonna take you out. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Simple and easy. There you go. Yeah, some some good names too in that division. So a lot of great fights there for you. Yep. Yeah, man. Um, and you know, you kind of already answered this question, but I'll still ask it anyways. You know, what will be your dream venue to headline one day? Where's my dream to headline? Like city, mm-hmm. yeah, city wise. Uh, Staples Center, MGM Grand, Madison Square Gardens, Dallas Stadium, England. I want to fight in London, uh, Mexico City, and the Aztec Stadium. That'd be badass. Oof. Uh, where else? Yeah, that's about it. Maybe Canada, but shit, it's cold out there. I, I don't like the cold. <laughs> so <laughs> dope locations for sure. Yeah. Um, you, you sparred hate Devin Haney in the past. What can you yeah. tell us about that? I would say Devin Haney, what he did in his last fight, how can I put it? He's a very, very, very skillful guy. He takes the sport really serious. His dad is like a genius. His dad is like the the master. What's the call? What's the word? The master planner behind it. Mm-hmm. You know and he's a good guy. It's either he likes you or he don't like you. That's what I noticed. But in that type of sparring, when I was sparring him, I learned so much. I learned how to place myself and how to what a good job is. How difficult it is to fight a good job. It was different to fight somebody just as fast as me and somebody that's. Just as elusive, so it's good work for me. That's what's so, up, bro. All right, and then Jalen, who's been the hardest puncher you've been in the ring with, either in sparring or in a pro fight? Um, when I was nineteen, I sparred this guy named Marlon Tapales. He's getting ready oh, to okay. fight Iowa, you know mm-hmm. Yeah, motherfucker get hit. That motherfucker get hit. I can tell you, he get hit. Like I was, dude, he be fucking sleeping, dudes. Like. He could hit, and I sparred that motherfucker like 30, 40 times. Oof. Oh, that sparring that made me a man out of anybody. I sparred other guys, other hard punchers, 
but with him, it's like fast, and his power never goes away. A lot of guys, like my last opponent, he was only a hard puncher for the first round. As the time went on, or like the first few seconds, as time went on, it goes away. I don't know, because it's Filipino. They're, they're short, but they got these fat-ass fucking bodybuilder legs. <laughs> like, no, like, bro, <laughs> like a fucking lineman. Like, they be like 5'3", but with these fucking linemen, quads, just fucking huge. And, well, they just hit. They're just hitters. Like, I yeah. have this Filipino. I was only sparred one that wasn't a hitter. Cause, but I think he's because he's Americanized. But, like, all the ones from the island, they're all hitters. I haven't been in there with one that's not, like, a fucking solid puncher. They're all good crack. Big time. Yeah, you can crack them. They, they, they got a chin, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know what's funny about the guys that could really crack, they could also get cracked, too. Mm-hmm. If that makes, yeah. like, that makes if you're a hard puncher, that chin is, like, slightly a little suspect. Mm-hmm. You know? Kind of like Felix Trinidad. Felix Trinidad used to fucking sleep dudes, but he used to get dropped a lot. So it's mm-hmm. like, I, <laughs> it gives and takes. Like, yeah, you'll be a one-hitter. Mm-hmm. That chin going to be a little chin. Yes, sir. Uh, let, let me let me ask you this question, bro. As everyone has their favorite uh, boxer growing up, mine is Canelo. Who was your favorite boxer growing up? I can't just say one. I've been boxing my whole life. I've been going through phases. So, obviously, you know, it's Mayweather, Pacquiao. Then I went through a, a Cesar Chavez senior phase where okay. I used to, like, I'll mimic his head movement coming forward. Uh, Roberto Duran, his body shots, his um punching and moving at the same time. Sugar Ray Leonard, his speed combinations, his meanness. You know, he was he was slick, but he was mean. And Roy Jones, mm-hmm. Pernell Whitaker. So you see, I can't name just one. They shame Rose really Jones. And then Oscar De La Hoya. You know, Oscar De La Hoya was a great fighter. You know, there's a lot of shit that people don't really like. Like I guess now, you know, like he's always in this media, but. He could fight his ass off. He had beautiful um combination punching. That fight with Felix Trinidad, beautiful, excellent boxing. You know, it was just the last few rounds he gave him up. But great fighter. Yeah, well yeah, said. Sorry. And now talking about present day, who do you consider to be the number one pound for pound fighter among active boxers? I don't I don't do pound for pound lists, really. Uh because you know, uh that's not really about they. But, of course, Canelo. I'm a Canelo fan. I like Canelo. I like Bennett. Well, Bennett Vias, I don't put him in there yet. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be a tough fight for Canelo if he fights Benavides. That's all I'm going to say. I like both yes. guys. Benavides is the real deal. Yes, sir. Proper, Canelo, Inoue. Also, you got to put Devin Haney in there. You know, he's in, he's in that top 10. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay. Dark of the Red, really, really fucking good. And he were weak. And the reason, after, yeah. fight, after that fight with Anthony Joshua, man, I wish he, like, bounced back and, like, was a little more active. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah, yes, I, want, I want to see him and Wilder, but that shit never happened. I think Wilder's going to... I like what Wilder's going to get him. The, the, the high... And Wilder's not Anthony Joshua, man. Yeah. You know I mean? mm-hmm. He's not Anthony Joshua, and everybody's been there where he fucking dropped. Like, he almost killed fucking um, Tyson Fury the last fight. Like, yeah, he got knocked out, but he came out of nowhere and dropped this man twice. Like, that power <laughs> never broke away. Yes, sir. I'm assuming you just, you've seen the fight Haney versus Regis this past Saturday. Oh. If yes, okay. what were you... What were your thoughts on uh, Haney's performance? Um, I was there. I was watching the front row. Um, it was it was cool. It was like a pro Haney crowd. Nobody was really going for Regis. Just his family was there. Mm-hmm. I would have liked if he finished uh, Regis, but you know that was their game plan. They were comfortable of winning that way. But from the beginning, no, it was just a shutout. The jab, the first round was like a toss up, but after that, it just went downhill for Regis. And he just showed their levels. And so it was a good fight. Good fight. I believe it was 
fight, damn near. It was a statement fight for sure. Yep, yes, absolutely. Sir. Uh, for this next section, we want to ask you about some uh, rumored matchups and get your take and opinion of who you think would win. If they're uh, too close to call, you can say 50 50, or you can also just always pass on them. All right, let's do it. All right, first one we want to ask you about is uh, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. How do you see that one playing out? Damn, man, you can't like put me on a spot like that. Shit. I like Ryan. <laughs> I don't have the amateurs. So, fuck, it's a toss up. You know, I, I knew his family. I went to tournaments with them, shared hotels with them. So I'm never going to go against him, you know. And that's just my principle as a man. I'm not going to go against somebody that's only been good to me growing up as a kid, you know. So all the older kids, when I was like eight and he was like maybe 13 or around that age, they were kind of assholes to us little kids. He was always like always chill with me, you know. He was always mm-hmm. like a guy. We have had the same coach for like a little minute, you know, so nah, I'm not going to say nothing. Good fight. Respect, respect. respect. Uh, next one is uh, Roly Romero versus Regis Progre. Damn. Um, If it was before the Devin Haney fight, I would clearly say Regis. If he could bounce back mentally, I got Regis. If he can't, then Roly. Really surprised me how good he was that last fight with Javante before he got knocked out. Yeah. It was surprising. Say so as well, uh, and the next one uh, you kind of already hinted: uh, Canelo Alvarez versus David Navides. Ah shit! Whew. man, I'm thinking David Benavides. But what if Canelo could turn back the clocks? If he could turn back Father Time, I think he can win. But Benavides is a bad motherfucker, and he's legit, and he's only getting better. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I feel I feel like the longer Canelo waits on that, it's just uh Yeah, it's gonna get bad. You know, he's not yeah. a fighter. So yeah. All right. Sure. As you, you know I'm I'm pretty sure you um you you love boxing. You know, uh, I'm assuming that's your only sport, but what do you do outside of boxing and like any interest or any other hobbies you do outside of boxing? Man, all my focus is in boxing. It's been like that since I was a kid. I don't believe in dividing my attention. If you divide your attention, it's going to... Um, the more the one thing, the higher probability of you being successful. And when you start dividing your attention and doing other things, it fucks you up. Like, as a kid, I always wanted to do wrestling and judo by my dad. And what he was right, he said, no, you got to just stay concentrated on boxing. And that's what I do. I like other things. The only other hobby I could say is fucking talking to girls but rather than boxing but besides that dog <laughs> it's boxing 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 all the way and then, uh, speaking of boxing you know, what's the best piece of advice you would give someone who's thinking about going pro in boxing and making a career out of it uh don't sign a bullshit contract with a manager a management contract sh- should never be 30 percent. it should be around 20 or under if it's 30 percent, that's because that Managers giving you like a monthly like living expense, so don't be stupid. Get everything looked at by a lawyer. Um, contracts ruin your career, so don't sign lengthy stuff. Let everything be short term, and then you can move on or continue if you like to work with that manager or promotion. And stay in shape, man, and know that your biggest enemy is your mind. You may think you're not in shape, but you actually are. It's just how you fight your fight. So spar the best, stay in shape, believe in yourself, believe in God, and you'd be good. Yes, Great sir. Advice. Yes, sir. Yeah. And last one, it's not, it's not more of a question, more of a, you know, to open up the floor here, uh, any message to your fans and supporters? Man, shout out to everybody that supports and loves me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the support. I'm going to keep showing up. Uh, people that don't speak English, I... Gracias por su apoyo. Eh, I don't want to say all of it in Spanish, but eh, muchas gracias, eh, mi gente. Eh, gracias, doctor. Eh, yeah, man, just keep watching me. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep giving you guys knockouts and exciting fights. You know, I'm a fighter. I got that brawling. I could box. I'm skillful, but I also want to beat you up. So it's going to be really good <laughs> 2024. Yes, sir. More, more the dark side. Yeah, more of the dark side. It's a, it's a constant battle. <laughs> yeah, Jelly, go, go ahead and uh, drop your socials. Where can people find you? 
Jalen underscore Skywalker. That's where you're going to find me on Instagram. And also is the same for TikTok. Uh, man, we're coming up 2024. I got a great promotion behind me. We're going to do it. We're going to do the damn thing. It may be in the U.S., maybe in the U.K. Who knows? I'm down for whatever. Uh, if it's in the U.K., I hope it's not the winter time. I don't like the fucking cold. But, man, let's get it. Let's get it. I'm ready for everybody. Uh, each fight is going to get better and better, and I'm going to show how my levels above the competition. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jalen, again, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to get to know you and, and uh, ask you some boxing questions, and we wish you the best in your career. Looking forward to seeing you back in the ring on February. Hey, man, thank you. This conversation, this interview was kind of quick. You know, it's all good. All good. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have you back again. Yeah, man, uh, let's do it after my fight or before my fight. You know, you got my number. Oh, it's good. Got you. Absolutely. Yes, all right. All right, Jalen, enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks again. Have a good one. All right, later.